All right, hey gang. Uh, yesterday, you know, we, we talked about, or in the last video, we talked about the Red Scare and how communism is really changing uh, the way the U.S. government uh, relates to its citizens. But it also, of course, is going to have a huge impact on the way that it relates, that the United States relates to the world. So uh, today, we're going to talk about the first real major engagement of uh, the Cold War era and how the United States becomes involved in Korea and, and uh, winds up uh, going through the, the war, <clears throat> excuse me, and how uh, how the war ends. So, uh, you know, Cold War tensions finally erupted in a shooting war in 1950 uh, when the U.S. confronts uh, North Korea. So we're going to talk about the situation in Korea before the war began. Uh, what led to the start of the war and the key battles of the Korean War as, as, as well as finally the armistice that ends the war. So before the war, Korea had been occupied by, or by Japan during World War II. All right, so Japan had occupied most of Korea during the war, and after Japan is defeated, it's basically divided into northern and southern parts. The uh, northern part, which had been controlled by the Soviet Union north of the 38th parallel, was, uh, was uh, going to be communist. <coughs> Excuse me. And the uh, United States, which had controlled the southern part of Korea at the end of the war, is, is going to make that part be non communist. So uh, basically, you have a communist North Korean government in the north and a uh, under the leader of uh, under the leadership of Kim Il Sung, who was the grandfather of the current uh, leader of uh, North Korea and the father of the famous Kim Jong Il, but it, Kim Il Sung becomes the first uh, president or uh, leader of uh, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, which is a communist nation. Meanwhile, South Korea, the United States promotes democratic, maybe uh, a. Sun, sunny way to put it, but it was a non-communist form of government. It was led by uh, the by their president, Syngman Rhee. So the Republic of Korea is South Korea, and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea is North Korea. All right, so the war started uh, when North Korea on June 25, 1950, invaded South Korea uh, in an attempt to unify the nation. Both uh, Kim Il Sung and Syngman Rhee wanted to unify the nations, but Kim Il Sung did so, sought to do so militarily. <clears throat> most of the Americans were, or most Americans were completely surprised by the attack. It was a very effective uh, uh, sneak attack, and, and American soldiers there were not prepared to face the North Vietnamese army. Uh, so basically, uh, you did have uh, some, uh, some, uh, Allied troops still there, but most had already been withdrawn. So the U.S. wasn't ready to fight in Korea. We had just we were just finishing the process of drawing down our military from fighting in uh, World War II, and that posed a problem. And the main problem is, you know, we're just not ready to go. And the decision to fight, however, was made very quickly by Truman. Truman decided that it was best that the United States and the United Nations take a stand against communist aggression. So he petitions the UN Security Council to uh, to uh, basically allow the use of force, and the council votes unanimously uh, unanimously to do so. So at the start of uh, the the Korean War, uh, the United States is kind of in trouble. You know they. They were, uh, the United States was leading the UN effort, and uh, basically, uh, in the beginning, Truman just ordered uh, American naval and air forces to try to help Korean troops, but it became obvious that that wasn't going to be enough, so Truman asked for uh, the approval to use force, uh, ground forces. <clears throat> the UN Security Council agreed with this, uh, agreed with uh, uh, Truman and basically uh, they, they say yeah we, we need to go ahead and stop the communists here and the United States leads the UN's force into uh, South into Korea now there was never a formal declaration of war uh, the U United Nations and the United States call Korea what's called a police action and a police action you know obviously they're they're trying to stop bad behavior by North Korea, in other words. 
So uh, early on, the North Koreans had really pushed back uh, the South Koreans and, and later on their American forces and uh, the, the UN forces only held a small foothold on, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on the southeastern corner of the Korean Peninsula. So uh, the United States and her UN allies really are looking to try to break out and, and push back the North Koreans, but or the North Koreans, but the North Koreans are just too uh, powerful at the time. Finally, what happens though, MacArthur, Douglas MacArthur, the commanding general of uh, UN forces there, decides to try a, a surprise attack. And this attack was an amphibious assault, which means they come in from the water, land on the land and, and assault from, from the sea, similar to D-Day or Iwo Jima or many other uh, Pacific battles of World War II. So uh, the port chosen or the place for the landing chosen is uh, in Incheon. And Incheon is uh, on the western coast of Korea, uh, near the North Korean border. And what happens is Basically, the invasion of Incheon is a success, and they're able to outflank the North Koreans and get behind uh, enemy lines and, and basically squeeze the North Koreans and cause, uh, you know, cause the North Koreans to retreat. So Incheon is followed by another offensive at Pusan. Mostly these two were done by U.S. Marines, by the way, but either way. Uh, and basically, it, it resulted in destruction of a lot of North Korean army. So basically, North Korea is in, in full retreat. And by October of that year, within a month, all of South Korea is back in UN hands. But MacArthur doesn't start stop there. <clears throat> he moves UN forces into North Korea and uh, basically pushes all the way up to the North, the North Korean border with China. So uh, within a couple of months, UN forces led by Douglas MacArthur and U.S. soldiers uh, basically had pushed the North Koreans and, uh, all the way back and was more or less in control of the entire Korean Peninsula. So basically what happens at that point is Truman tells MacArthur, says, hey, look, you know, uh, don't go near the Chinese border. Truman didn't want the Chinese to become involved. MacArthur said, you know, something like, if the Chinese do attack, sir, I'll make the greatest, I'll make the greatest, uh, oh, I can't remember, but I, I'll, I'll destroy them uh, greater than any, any destruction in the history of uh, warfare, something like that. MacArthur was a very uh, guy that's kind of full of himself and, and uh, you know, very, very uh, arrogant and egotistical. So anyway, what happens is, MacArthur approaches the Yellow River, which is the border between North Korea and China, against the orders of Truman. And this brings 260 plus thousand Chinese soldiers into the war. And this new influx of, of soldiers pushes back the UN forces uh, all the way back to Seoul. And it looks like, um, it looks like more or less that the United States may, or the U UN, led by the United States, may not uh, be able to uh, ensure the safety of South Korea. This is the longest retreat, by the way, in U.S. military history. So anyway, so MacArthur says uh, publicly, comes out, General MacArthur says, you know, you may face the choice between defeat by the Chinese or a major war with them. So he says that, that, that the United States should expand the war by bombing the Chinese mainland and even possibly using nuclear weapons. Um, MacArthur uh, kind of pops off at the mouth, and Truman says, look, uh, we don't want any more comments about, uh, we don't want any more comments about nuclear war or anything like that. We're trying to prevent, you know, World War III here. In the meantime, a U.S. force led by uh, Lieutenant General uh, Ridgway, Matthew Ridgway, stopped the Chinese and pushed them back to the 38th parallel. So basically now the two forces are, deadlocked about where they were at the beginning of the war, before the war started. So again, Truman said, MacArthur, we need to just stop saying these things about nuclear weapons and full-scale attack and all that kind of stuff. You know, again, we're trying to avoid World War III. Well, MacArthur basically 
disagrees with Truman, and he makes it known publicly. So he publicly uh, goes against the President of the United States, who is the Commander-in-Chief and, in effect, his boss. Truman will have none of it. He feels like he's given enough to MacArthur, and he finally decides just to fire him altogether. Now, this is incredibly unpopular. It may, in fact, have cost Truman re-election in 1952. But Americans are outraged by the firing of MacArthur. He's a great hero of World War II, the rebuilder of Japan. Uh, you know, he's, he's done all of these things, and the American people are shocked that Truman uh, would fire him. At any, way, at any rate, uh, you know, the, the war stays deadlocked, basically, for uh, the next months, and uh, neither side really moves much. So in July 1951, peace talks begin. The problem, really, is the boundary. Uh, you know, the boundary, where the boundary is going to be set. Both sides disagree with it. And meanwhile, while these talks are going on for months and months and months, you still have all these bloody battles, Heartbreak Ridge, Bloody Ridge, uh, famous battles in Korean War history. And Korean War was a brutal war. It was very, uh, it was very uh, uh, up close and personal. In fact, there have been studies that said you know something like uh, fifty percent of casualties in the Korean War were from hand-to-hand -hand combat. So we're talking about up close, brutal, bloody fighting. Anyway, so in October, the peace talks stall over prisoners of war. So they're meeting in Panmunjom in North Korea to try to, you know, hammer out a peace agreement, but it lasts into 1952. Finally, in 1952, Dwight D. Eisenhower was elected president, and he is run primarily promising to end the war. Uh, however, he doesn't get sworn in until 53. So fighting continues in the final two months of the war. UN forces wind up losing about 57,000 men over the course of the for the final two months, and the communists lose 100,000. So you're talking about a massive loss of life over just a couple of months span. Finally, an armistice ending the fighting is reached in July 27, 1953, during Eisenhower's administration. And basically, after the war, the map of Korea looks virtually the same as it did before the war. So neither side gained. Both sides lose, and the casualties and the human cost of the war were massive. So again, basically, you know, the war uh, lasts for three years, and, and there's really nothing settled between the North uh, and South Korean nations. But and even today, they're divided along economic and political lines. North Korea is still communist. South Korea is still uh, non-communist, more democratic now. But uh, so this is going to kind of set the tone for future conflicts. And as we move uh, forward into the Cold War, of course, we're talking about, we'll talk about some other major conflicts, conflicts like Vietnam and uh, some lesser conflicts uh, that you may not have heard of before. So uh, until next time, we'll see you later.